Hallelujah. Amen. How about just taking those little blinders off? Amen. Sometimes we have to. We get so senile. All we can see is just one thing. Amen. But let's just take the blinders off this morning and say, God, help me to see everything that you're doing. Help me to see what you're doing. Help me to see more than just what I want to see. Praise God. Amen. How many of us this morning want to go a little deeper in God? Amen. There's more to be had in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There is so much more, so much more. Praise God. What more is it? Amen. I'll tell you what, God is an on-time God. God is an ongoing God. He's, he's, uh, he's not just one thing. Amen. Whenever you just, uh, you know, maybe you experience salvation, but there's more to the Lord than just salvation. You see, salvation was about you. What do you mean about me? Yes, amen. It saved your soul from an ever-burning hell, from a forever eternal hell. Amen. God saved you. Praise the Lord. He gave you an opportunity, amen, to step into the uh, a Christian walk, step into a new faith. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to tell you what, that now, amen, once we have taken that new uh, step in faith and we have been saved, then now there is a... Uh, a life, amen. There is a life to experience in the Lord. Some people live this life as a, uh, as a, just like something you have to do and something you, uh, you have to be now. But oh, I tell you what, I thank God, praise the Lord, that I can enjoy my Christian faith. How many of us tonight, this morning, are enjoying our Christian faith? I hope that you are, are. If you're not, amen, I would like to this morning show you that we need to be enjoying our Christian faith and enjoying the presence of God. Praise the Lord. What is a marriage if you're not enjoying your marriage? Amen. What is your relationship? What is our friendship if we don't enjoy our friendship? That isn't friendship, is it? Hey, how in the world could, Brother Dwayne, you call me friend if there was really no friendship there? So you see, friendship is enjoyable. We can enjoy communing and talking to one another. We can enjoy each other's presence. Hey, Amen. You see, that's enjoyable, isn't it? Hey, Amen. We can enjoy sitting down and having a meal and conversating over it. Uh, we can enjoy different things together. We can enjoy fishing together. We can enjoy uh, coming to church together. Amen. Well, God wants you to enjoy your life with him. If you don't enjoy serving the Lord, amen, you don't have the Lord I have. <laughs> Come on now. And I ain't talking about just what I have. I'm talking about what this book talks about. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Go back and read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, talks about love. You got to read a lot of times 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 to get what he's talking about. But he's talking about all the things that you can do. You can speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. What doeth it profit? Amen. We can have all kinds of things, but if we don't have love, I want to tell you what, you need to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Praise the Lord. Amen. How about it? Do you love him this morning? Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to get back to loving the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 8 is where we'll read this morning. Nehemiah chapter 8. In verse 1, back in the Old Testament. I don't really preach from Nehemiah a whole lot, but... uh. In case you're having trouble finding it, you got First, Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, right in there. Nehemiah chapter eight. We'll start reading verse one. The Bible says, "And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into a street that was before the water gate, and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel." And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. 
And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and women and those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Man, could you imagine? We can't hardly sit 45 minutes in church without getting antsy, and I got to go. Listen to that. They read from morning until midday. Wow. Verse 4 says, And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside them stood uh, Mattathai and Shema and Ananiah and Urijah, uh, excuse me there, but Urijah, uh, Helikai, and Masia on his right hand and on his left hand. And then I'll just, you can read those, rest those names by yourself. Verse 5 says, And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, and all the people stood up, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Sound like this having church, doesn't it? Amen. Also, here we go with these uh, group of names, and then it says, They caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read in the book, verse 8, in the law of God distinctive, distinctly, and gave sense, and caused them to understanding. That, we need some more of that today in our churches, don't we? Amen. We need to make some sense of what God has to say. Verse 9 says, And Nehemiah, which is, which is the Tereshatha, and Ezra, the priest, the scribe, and the Levites, which taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Now, you know, I wonder what made them weep. Well, I could say, I think that they wept because they felt convicted. They felt the awesomeness of God's word. They felt, uh, you know, the shame of their own life, maybe. Verse 10, then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord your God. Our God, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's where I want to preach from this morning. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. Father, I've come to you this morning. I ask you to help us today in the word of the Lord that you would uh, help us, Jesus, in expounding this word, Lord. I pray that our souls would be sparked with fire this morning, that we would have the joy that you want us to have in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes I find myself needing a little more, more, little bit more joy than I have. Praise God. Amen. I want to tell you, praise the Lord. Uh, serving Jesus should not be uh, a, uh, a drudge to you. It should not be. Oh, I got to go to church again. Oh, I got to get out and pray again. And uh, it should not be disinteresting to us. Praise God. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Amen. You know how that there is joy in your soul. There is joy in the Lord. <clears throat> there is joy whenever you begin to pray. Now, let me tell you, let me have, be just really transparent with us this morning. If we don't pray, as we were taught in Sunday school this morning, and we don't read our word, and we, uh, you know, all we do is just, you know, listen every now and then to what somebody's trying to say spiritually. Let me tell you, you're not going to experience the joy that God wants you to experience. Right. Amen. Amen. We, we see food advertisements everywhere, don't we? You look on Facebook and there's all kinds of recipes. And uh, what catches your eye? Not just the, the reading, but the picture, doesn't it? Show me a picture in a menu and I can figure out what I want. Right? Amen. We see all the advertisements. 
But if you don't get interested and you don't see what it has in it, what it's made of, whether it's a beef enchilada, I know I'm going to make you hungry here, but you, you uh, got to see whether it's a beef enchilada or a chicken enchilada, whether it's got cheese or queso on it or, you know, on and on and on. You see uh, what different ingredients are here, what you're hungry for. And you begin to study the menu and you look at things and you think, oh, man, that looks great. That sounds wonderful. And you click share on that uh, that recipe that sounds so good to you. Maybe you hit the kitchen and you start trying to make it up yourself. And you get interested, right? Then it starts smelling good. Then it turns out great. And you eat it and it makes you feel good, doesn't it? Because you got interested. Now, if you never took the moment to stop, maybe you, you any of you ever, let's be honest, you ever go... To a restaurant and say, I'm not hungry. I don't care nothing about eating nothing. Y'all don't worry about ordering me anything. Then you sit down. And then that one next to you gets their big old juicy hamburger delivered to them. And you're sitting there watching them eating and drip juices dripping out of the bottom of it. I don't know why I'm going all these places. But anyway, I'm really not hungry. But I'm trying to make a point. You, you see that. You think, man, that smells good. That looks good. I think I'm hungry. Those hunger pains start stirring up inside of you. My point is this morning, if we don't get interested, if we don't get involved, there won't be no joy. There won't be no appetite. Whenever you start praising the Lord for his goodness and all that he's done for you. When you start reading into the word of God and seeing his wonderful promises. And you start praying and applying them to your life. And then you experience the strength of God. You experience the joy of the Lord. Praise God. There is joy to be had in our life. Amen. If you call yourself a Christian this morning and you always got a frown on your face and you never have nothing spiritual to say and your, your thoughts are never upon God. Amen. I'm going to tell you what. You need to change Christianity. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. There is joy in serving God. Right. How many of you believe that with me this morning? You can be happy about your life. You can be happy of where God has brought you from. You see, it's Satan's work to make you disgusted, to make you sad. You know, he always wants to point out somebody else's problems in the church. He always wants to point out something bad about the church or bad about this or bad about that. But you know what? It's time for you and I to be an optimist. That means to look at the good of things. <clears throat> you can always find bad in everything. But if, oh, if we'll start looking for joy, you'll surely find it. You see these people in verse 9, they were weeping. But Nehemiah told them, he said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. He said, neither be you sorry. Verse 11 says, So the Levites stealed all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for this day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And then all the people in verse 12 went their way to eat and drink and sin portion to make mirth. And because they had understood. Isn't it a wonderful thing when you finally understand? Yes, sir. That brings joy, doesn't it? That brings happiness. Hallelujah. You might have been worried about something. You might have been worried about your child some, having some kind of problem or being sick. But whenever the doctor came to the room and said, you know what? The, uh, Mom, Dad, this ain't nothing to worry about. It's just a little old one or two day cold. You don't have to worry about it. And you thought it was something drastic going on. You was worried about them. Maybe they was running high fever or whatever. But the doctor checked them out and said, you don't have to worry about it. Amen. Then that brings joy to your heart. It relieves the worry and you, you leave the doctor's office and you're not worried about it no more. The doctor said it's going to be okay. Well, I'm telling you what, Jesus said it's going to be okay. You don't have to drown your problems and drown yourself in your problems. But know that it's going to be all right. You can be happy this morning. Praise God, praise God. 
If you if you go over to Nehemiah chapter twelve, <clears throat> in verse forty-two, here we are with a choir of names. Is how this verse starts off with. In the latter portion of verse forty-two, says, "And the singers sang loud, and Jezreel their overseer." In verse forty-three, also. That day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Whenever you get the joy in your heart, your neighbor will know about it. Amen. Your neighbor will see the smile on your face and say, you know what? I want to be around you today. I want to be around your happiness. I'd like to have some of that <clears throat> happiness and joy that you have. Amen. You see, whenever we want to call ourselves a Christian and we're not joyful and we always got a sad countenance. I know there's a time to be sad but it isn't all the time right amen there's some time in your life that you can be happy amen you can be a pleasant person to be around thank you jesus amen if we want to claim we got jesus we need to be happy about our jesus right amen anybody need a little happiness this morning praise god come on there's something to smile about ain't everything bad look up a little bit remember your redeemer this morning Amen. Remember how good God is to your life. Amen. You can be thankful that you're not diagnosed with cancer this morning, a, a terminal illness or whatever. Amen. You can be happy. Praise the Lord that, that you're sitting in the house of God this morning. You can be happy. Praise the Lord that you're not mourning. Amen. Over some tragic thing. Hallelujah. I don't know. You may, there may be somebody is in here this morning that is disgusted with some situation. I don't know. Amen. But I want to tell you, place that in God's hand and lift up your head and say, Lord, I want that joy back in my soul. I want to tell you my own experience one time. It seemed like the devil wanted me to get up every day. And I found myself being uh, tormented and being worried and being just unhappy every day. All the the time amen and you know what I realized that's a devil trying to disrupt my life and you know what he'll do something he'll do that same thing to us if he can get you upset over something you know stop and take inventory about it how long have you been unhappy how long has that devil tormented you day in and day out and you only find just a little bit of joy here and there. I'm telling you what, it's more than your situation. It's the devil that is, that is tormenting your life and taking and stealing your joy. And whenever he's got your joy, he's got your strength. What did the scripture say? The joy of the Lord is what? Your strength. So if the old devil can take your joy and steal your happiness, what does he have? He has your strength. You might be saying, I never looked at it that way this morning. God, give me my joy. David said, laughter doeth good like a medicine. Think about that last time moment where somebody got you so tickled. That you couldn't quit laughing. Anybody ever got tickled in church? I know you have. Hard to quit laughing. Hannah back there sometimes. She'd get tickled over something. She can't hardly stand it, can you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You, you, whenever you get happy about something. Praise the Lord. It does something to you. Praise God. I ain't trying to be carnal this morning. But I want to tell you what. <coughs> a happy person. Uh, they're, they're fun to be around. It's enjoyable. And God wants you to be happy in your walk with him. Let's get our happiness back. Romans 14 verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace. Oh, now listen here. And joy in the Holy Ghost. 
praise God, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The original Hebrew uh, meaning for joy in Nehemiah 8 and 10 is a word called shedva, meaning joy or gladness. The root word for joy in the second in this context means to rejoice, to make glad. Strength in the same verse is a Hebrew word meaning a place or means of safety, protection, refuge, or stronghold. The root word of strength means to be strong, prevail, to make firm, strengthen. The joy of the Lord is a constant gladness and cause to rejoice. It stems from our inner strengthening, from our relationship with him. When Jesus died for us, you know what he done? He restored us to the peace with God that cannot be undone. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He, he, uh, he restored us. He restored that relationship. Amen. Your joy rests on God's joy. Praise God. Your joy rests on God's joy. The joy of the Lord. Amen. I don't need just joy, but I need the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. John chapter 17 and verse 13 says, And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world that they might have. Now before I finish reading this verse, <clears throat> Jesus said, And now come I to thee. He has came unto them, and these things I speak to the world. Well, we can think of all kinds of things that Jesus spoke in the New Testament, don't we? We read all the parables, all the good things, that you know, the words of wisdom that Jesus had to say. <clears throat> I'm thinking whenever he's, his, uh, his family, his mom and dad, <clears throat> excuse me, lost him in the temple. You know what he was doing? He was teaching. He was teaching the elders, a little old boy, for three days. He was in there teaching them elders, teaching them people. Wow. These things I speak in the world. I wonder what things he was speaking in that temple. <laughs> that, he done all that for this that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves. You see, this ain't just me this morning. God wants you to have joy in your life. Amen. God wants you to have happiness in your life. Praise the Lord. Figure it out what it is that is stealing and robbing your happiness. Amen. And let's correct these things. Let's correct these things. You know, I, I know one thing that, that we can start with is, is what we were being taught in Sunday school. And whenever we fail to pray, amen, it robs us of, uh, robs us of our happiness, of our joy. What's, the, what's in the biblical context of this text verse? The joy of the Lord is my strength. We don't just do things for the Lord. We live our lives in him, with him, and by his strength. And that's how we live. Praise God to honor him with submission of our will for his. He is our strength. What's Nehemiah trying to tell us about how we should live? Think about it for a moment. How, what is Nehemiah trying to say to this people after he's read from morning until noon? He's read the scriptures. Amen. They weeped. And, you know, and he says, hold on a minute. Let me tell you, the, the, stop crying. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Pick your head up. Hold your head up this morning. I want to relate that to Tatum holding his church this morning. Pick your head up wherever you're sitting this morning and realize that God is your strength. His joy is your strength. Hallelujah. Nehemiah was not only concerned with rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, he was passionate about restoring the hearts of the people. Just as we scroll through the modern day social media with a the knowledge there is more to a life than what we are able to see. So Nehemiah knew true joy and restoration could only come from an inner strength that God had provided and he'll come through us. 
Amen. With that inner strength. Amen. That inner strength. Amen. I need to get along somewhere and say, God, give me that joy again. Give me that passion in my heart. Amen. Give me that zeal in my soul that I can come into your presence. Amen. And enjoy the presence of God. Hallelujah. How about us this morning? Anybody need to enjoy yourself in God again? You can, praise God, you can, hallelujah, you can rejoice in the Lord. He said in 1 Thessalonians, or maybe 2 Thessalonians, rejoice evermore. There's some joy in this Bible. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17, I'm going to skip through this, this book. <laughs> Nehemiah 9 and 17 says, And refused to obey, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and forsook them not. Amen. That's the God that we serve. We serve a God that is ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, amen, slow to anger and of great kindness. I don't know who, who spelled out what God should be. I know, uh, I, I think some folks trying to paint a picture of God with a big old hammer in his hand, amen, and sitting over us like this right here, waiting on us to do something. That's not God. Amen. God's not like that. Amen. God's not waiting on you to make a wrong move so he can hammer you down. Amen. We live that way sometimes. Amen. Yes, we do have. Uh, you know, he said the law was for the unrighteous. Yeah, the unrighteous folk. God has his wrath for them. They'll experience their wrath after this life. But we can't argue this morning that God is. That's just what the Bible says. But thou art God ready to pardon. He's ready to forgive us. He's ready to help us. Praise the Lord. He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. Amen. And forsook them not. Joy isn't something we create, earn, or deserve. Though we have nothing to give and no ability to stop sinning sometimes, amen, we think we don't have the ability to stop. But I want to tell you what, there is grace. There is help in the name of the Lord. Amen, for our every need. Amen, but you know what? <clears throat> Christ, he reached down. He came down from heaven and died for me and you. And I want to tell you what, he loves you this morning. He loves you. He wants you to have that joy in your heart. He loves you so. Amen. God loves you so. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. He so loves us this morning. Whenever we think of God, think of all of his goodness. Amen. We can, we can be thankful. We can praise him. We can worship him. It can bring joy to our life. Amen. Hallelujah. Joy. Amen. Joy. I need that joy this morning. Joy don't just happen. Joy is a result of a disciplined, prioritized life guided by the Holy Spirit. Let me read that again for you. Joy is a result of a disciplined, prioritized life guided by by the Holy Spirit. To put a little commentary with that. Let's just say there's something in our life that we need to do. We all got that, don't we? You women folk, you've got some things that you need to do to your home. You need to clean your house today. Or you need to go buy groceries or whatever. Us guys, we, we need to go uh, get some things together. We, we need to, to, to get some business decisions done. <clears throat> but 
Somehow or another, we keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And it's, it becomes disgusting to us every time we think about it. It's like, oh, man. <clears throat> but once you stop and do what you know you need to do, and you get that task done in your life, don't you feel happy? Don't you feel joyful? Man, I feel so great. I got that done. I'm done with that. I've been needing to, how many of you said I've been needing to do that a long time? I've been needing to clean out that closet for years. You got in there cleaning out that closet and found something you've been looking for for years. You see, something just might happen. Amen. Whenever we get our priorities right, whenever we stop, and start being disciplined in our life. It will bring joy. It will bring happiness to you. And also when it's guided by the Spirit. Amen. Let's look at our attitude. You know joy is an attitude. <coughs> to me it's more. Attitude is more important than facts. Follow along with me. It's more important than the past. Than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It's more important than how I look, more important than, than what I'm skilled with. It, may, it will make or break a company, a church, a home, attitude that is. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change the past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing <coughs> we can do is play on one string that we have and that is our attitude. Right. Come on, can you say amen this morning? I am convinced that life is about 10% of what happens around us or what happens to me. And 90% is how I react to it. And so it is with every one of us here this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We are in charge of our attitude. You know that this morning? You are in charge of your attitude. Nobody else is. Nobody else makes me act grumpy. Tommy does. Nobody else gets me up on the wrong side of the bed. Tommy does. I'm in charge of that. Praise God. Well, I just, you know, I ain't always feeling all spunky all the time. I understand that. Amen. Sometimes we don't feel good. Amen. But it's my choice to, to, to pull an attitude along with that. You see, that's double trouble, isn't it? Amen. Romans 8 and verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, for the law of the Spirit of life. And Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. We enter God's work with thanksgiving and joy, knowing that we will sometimes fall and struggle, but knowing also that our struggling, our falling, and falling are not the last word. God has the last word. And that word is Jesus. Amen. Jesus set us free from condemnation and shame. You can walk on. Praise God. You don't have to live in your past. Praise God. Amen. My elder friends here right up on the front, they're a fine example. They, you don't have to live in your, your past. I've watched you guys joy for uh, over several years now. Amen. Service after service. Amen. <clears throat> that proves to me that we can have joy no matter what the rest of our life was. Amen. I, I was watching a video I was inspired about the other day. A guy that 
had uh, uh, lived in prison just about all his life. I want to say he said 36 years. He said he was very vile and, and just he didn't get into what all he had done, but he just he just had a very wicked life. And his testimony was about how God saved him and changed him and, uh, and set him on a different road. Amen. He began to tell what God had done for him. Amen. Express the joy that was in his life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus brings joy. Amen. In the camp. He brings joy in your camp. He brings joy in your life. Praise God. I want to tell you again, it is the work of Satan. Amen. To keep you disgusted all the time. To keep you miserable. To keep you just, amen, your attitude in the wrong place. Amen. And not joyful. Amen. You know, amen. Let me refer you back to our text this morning. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord. Amen. Don't you want that joy? Amen. Sister Melissa, would you help me out on the piano this morning? I'm going to read you some more scriptures. About joy. You can just follow along if you like. Philippians 4 and 4 says rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16 says rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. He talks about the joy of the Lord as our strength. Some places where it talks about our strength. Isaiah 40 and verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. And them that have no might. He increaseth strength. That's my God this morning. He increases that strength that we need. Proverbs 10 and 29, the way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Amen. That's plain and simple, isn't it? Amen. If I go God's way, if I walk with the Lord, amen, if I walk in his footsteps, I'm going to have joy. I'm going to have strength. Psalm 28 and 8, the Lord is their strength. And he is the saving strength of his anointed. Psalm 27 and 1. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? He's strength in your life. 2 Samuel 22 and 33. God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. Hallelujah. Joy in Christ. It, like I said a while ago, it, it ain't just some uh, uh, fancy feeling. Amen. Or, or maybe the telling of a joke joy. Amen. It trumps all of that. Amen. But I want to tell you what. Joy is there in these moments. But true joy stems from an unwavering strength from the Lord. Sure, joy is there in happy moments, telling a story or whatever, a joke or that, that kind of funniness, that kind of joy. But there's joy in that unwavering life. Hallelujah. Amen. Help me, Jesus, to live so I can have joy. Amen. I want to have that joy. Nehemiah knew that to experience joy... An inner restoration had to supersede the exterior rebuilding of the city. You see, he, he was trying to get some walls built back up. The enemy came in and destroyed these walls. They were grieved in their heart. But you know what? There had to come. He knew that he had to get these people excited about God. If they were going to get the wall back up. I like to see Tatum holding his church get excited about God. Amen. And build up this church. Build up your community. Build up those that live around you. Amen. And you will whenever God, amen, uh, uh, gives you that joy that you need this morning. Don't we want that joy? We can be more of a representative of Christ 
whenever the joy of the Lord is in our soul. Hallelujah. You just see, we all well know that if we don't have the joy, nobody's going to want what we got. Amen. You can't be an old grumpy Christian. You can't be that. I'm not talking about old in age. You can't be disgusting to be around and call yourself a Christian. Amen. I want to tell you what, this way that we are preaching, this way that, that we see Christ's way, amen, it's the good way. Amen, we should walk therein. Amen, we should have joy. Amen, he is our strength this morning. <clears throat> we can build the things that God wants to, us to rebuild or build in our life whenever we get the joy in our soul again. Even whenever we get the excitement. Any of you ever say, well, I just don't feel like it right now. I know I need to do this task, but it just ain't in me. I just don't feel like it. But whenever you get interested and whenever you get excited, amen, you can get some things done. And that's what God wants to do in your heart. Would you stand with me? Praise the Lord. Father, we are grateful for this Sunday morning and so thankful, amen, for the presence that you have placed in our hearts and minds this morning. Please touch as we come to the altar in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite you to the altar service this morning. <clears throat>